YouTube, it's your man's Veracity TT back again with another tutorial. And I'm a little bit under the weather, so I ain't feeling the best. So today, instead of me being in the camera while I'm showing you the tutorial, I'm just introducing a video right now. And then I'm gonna just have it all screen so you can just see exactly what's happening, what's going on. So today we're gonna be using the X6, the UAD Apollo X6. And we're gonna be using Studio One Seven. And I'm gonna show you the way that I record. And it's gonna be a quick one. I'm gonna just show you the way I set it up. And you know, some of the best practices that I use to record, you feel me? And that's pretty much it. So stay tuned, cause I'm gonna keep doing this like at least once a week. I'm gonna keep on making the videos how I use the UAD or whatever. Cause y'all know I do got the um, MPC one. So I have a video where I'm showing you how I do that and all of that type of little stuff. So just stay tuned, subscribe. Cause we gonna be doing this weekly and uh, yeah, check me out. So here, Let's take a look at Universal Audio's Council app. This is the app where I set up how I want my monitoring to sound. I don't use Studio One to monitor. I just use the UAD Council app to monitor, okay? So this is how I set it up. So I usually have my vocals, like how I'm talking to you now. Yo, yo, you can see it's at negative six, between negative three and negative six. That's the sweet spot. But to be honest with you, I really would say negative nine. Like, it just depends on how hype I am and what type of song it is. So let's just say negative nine to negative five-ish. You feel me? Leave your room for the peaks to maybe hit and cap out at negative three. So this is where you want your vocal range to be. Like, at least this is where I have mine at. Okay? So I use, um, um, so for monitoring, I just use this EQ, this compressor. And I use auto-tune. All right? This is what I use. This is my settings. Get a good look. These are the settings that I use. All right? I just, you know, that's it. And I only use the units in preamp if the song is aggressive, if the artists have thin vocals, because, you know, this is going to add harmonic content and color. Like, I only use this um, in those situations now, the last song that you heard on my unboxing, this is exactly how I have it set up. So I had, let's go over here, though. Let me show you one more thing. Hold on. I had this turned on so you can hear how that sounds. That's the reverb. This is the four, uh, 480. So this is the 480. I have the 480 turned on. That's the reverb. I usually have auto-tune turned on. You can hear how it sounds. You can hear how it sounds. You feel me? And so this is how I recorded it. And this is only monitoring. I don't record these plugins or these effects. So everything that you heard in the last video is literally everything that I did in Studio One. And I'm going to show you that next. But for now, I usually have my game here. Oh, let me turn this off and turn this off. I usually have my game around 42. Maybe sometimes slightly less, about a good 40. So this is where I usually have my vocals at. So in case you're wondering how to get that clean sound to where you can use your plugins and things sound good, this is where I use my vocals at. And my example is in the last video again. I'm going to do a series. This is episode two. In my last video, I played the song. I opened up that UAD, unboxed it, man, and went straight to work. And then I wanted to just hear the preamps clean without the units in it or anything else. But this is the way I set it up to monitor myself for zero latency. So inside of Studio One, I already had like my template in there. I had my stuff set up already. You know, I had my master effects in there on the bus and all of that set up. And uh, I knew there was going to be latency. So I set this up and you know, so I can get a great performance. And that's all I did. And now I'm going to show you how it looks inside of Studio One. All right, guys, first thing we want to talk about is you see how I have Studio One here on virtual one and two. I'm going to show you that right here, right now. Go up here to UAD preferences. And this is I'm doing this because if I'm live streaming or anything like that, I want to be able to control the DAW in console in one spot on a separate screen 
so that everything is easy and I'm not clipping or anything like that. So I have Studio One going out of Virtual One and Two. So here on the input side, if you scroll down, you can see number 17 and number 18 used to say Virtual One and Two, but I have it going to monitor left for 17 and monitor right for 18. So you can see that. So there, that's how I set that up. Inside of Studio One, you can see the main track over here, just click there, is going to Virtual One and Two. Now, before we get there, you can right click in any area down here and go to audio um, IO setup. And when you get an audio IO setup, remember virtual one and two. That's how you set it up. And also on the outputs, I have it going to virtual 19 and 20. On the outputs, that's where virtual is. Is one and two is on 19 and 20. So inside the console, if you look over here, you see 19 and 20 is virtual one and two. And if I push play inside of Studio One, oh, shit, okay, push play to the trauma that we're born in. Like we're sworn in. You can see allegiance to Studio a black One of... is coming out here. So I can turn that down and now you wouldn't hear anything. Okay. So in my last video, you heard all of this process going on. All of this process going on. I want you guys to hear the raw vocals. I didn't use the external preamp or anything like that. I went straight into the Apollo X6 straight XLR microphone i wanted to hear the preamp without anything extra okay so that vocal you heard you heard that process now i want you to on this video i want you to hear how it sounds raw the raw vocal without anything extra so you can see i got my mix bus turned off i got my vocal bus turned off and i also have everything on the vocal turned off so i'm gonna play it so so you can hear what type of quality vocal you need It's no background noise It's straight vocal. So you can kind of see a good starting point on what you need and you can get amazing results. Let me turn studio one back up. Okay. So I'm gonna press play and I'm gonna mute my mic. So that won't interfere with any noise added in the background. To the trauma that we're born in. Like we're sworn in, then pledge allegiance to a flag that will most of us dead. While we're still kids in church, breaking bones, drinking blood as we bow our heads. When you saying it out loud, that sounds like a trance. Is it a caught at the culture of them prayer hands? Cause soon as a nigga leave, they about to sin again. How much blood needed from God before you really cleansed? How much forgiveness is needed before you make amends? How many people in church still playing pretend? The blind lead, the blind like niggas playing. Simon says no. The blind leading niggas with eyes, homie, let's be for real. Question everything or you will drown the last without a bridge sink low enough you see the squid games outside the crib get government assistance when you keep the daddies out the deal section they live in keep you dependent it's a mental cell niggas glorify catching bodies like bullets repel ain't afraid of jail afraid of hell but really scared to live selling anything including self now they just empty shells i guess that's the meaning when they tell you hustle to death I all right so you can see that's how it sounds this is the literal exact setting that i used I didn't use anything in the unison. That's the raw vocal. The raw vocal. The unison adds a lot of color. So I use that with more aggressive music. Trap style. Sometimes I might even use it for R&B. Depending on how loud the singer is singing. And what type of beat it is. So I don't use the unison often. But when I do use it. It still sounds fire. But this particular Neve unison adds a lot of color. So I don't even use the unison. That's just literally raw vocal with nothing else added. These plugins down here on the insert, I, I had this turned on. Auto tune, you can hear it. So I had that turned on when I was recording, but this is all monitoring. This is not being printed, okay? I also had a reverb turned on. So this is my chain when I'm recording and what I'm hearing back in Studio One with zero latency. So turn that on turn this on and it's exactly how i have it and i turn up this track to around 
Negative six. Negative six. Eight. Negative six. That's about where I want my vocals. Between nine and six is where I want my vocal hitting at. All right? That's how I do it. In Studio One, on the vocal track, I mute it because I don't want to hear monitoring from Studio One and its plugins. I only want to hear this monitoring. So this is kind of what it sounds like when I'm recording straight out the Apollo. Okay? This is this my settings right here. Now in Studio One, if you click here and there, go to general. No, 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 not general. Sorry. Let's go to preferences. You can see I'm on 2048 samples inside of Studio One. Ain't no way you about to get, <laughs> you about to record. Your vocal going to be so delayed. So that's, that's why I set it up to where I get a good sound out of the Apollo to hear. Because this make me give a better vocal performance. Yo, see? So now we back in UAD audio. I'm going to just turn off this. Yo, yo, yo. So there we go. And this how it sounds. So that's how I do it. This the chain that I use. I usually only use this universal audio unison section if I really need like extra color. I really want to get most of my vocals recorded straight through the preamp without anything extra happening. So this is how I set it up. And I turn this channel up to around six. So I could get a little more volume without having to turn the headphones up too loud to where it bleed in the mic. All right. And I record at 96 hertz. So just in case I want to pitch a sample, stretch anything out, even pitch a vocal, do deep voice. All of that sounds much better at a higher, uh, you know, like 96, 88. It sounds much better when you go higher to record it in that way. All right. Also, I want my plugins to have a little bit of oversampling in them if they don't include that feature to prevent aliasing and everything sounds better at a higher uh, kilohertz uh, area. So I usually be at 96 or 88.2. All right, so that's how I do it. So if you wanna hear how my vocal sound with all this processing and stuff turned on, then go watch my first video. But here, I wanna give you one gem before I leave. Use the SSL G bus compressor on your vocal. This is my settings. I only got like 11.3 uh, uh, threshold. It usually hit around two or three up here. And then the makeup, 1.1. Auto for the release. The attack, 10 milliseconds. With a ratio of four to one. Try that on your vocal. Sounds wonderful. It makes it sound thick. And it give you that sound that a preamp probably would give you, but it just make it sound thick and good. I don't know what it's doing under the hood, but it sounds amazing. So experiment sometimes. It's a, it's a bus compressor, but try it on your vocal track. And you're going to love me later. Thank me later. All right. Go on ahead and subscribe. I'm going to be trying to drop these UAD videos every week until I feel like I did everything that I normally do in my process of how I record, mix, and produce all right thanks for checking me out later